if there's one thing I'm going to miss about Fabricant 100 is every week getting to see Fab 100's massive, ginormous, fat Fabricant 100 was doomed from the start. A revenge action manga featuring an odd couple with conflicting goals, it was one of four series to debut within Weekly Shonen Jump in late 2022. That year wasn't the strongest for Jump, with a number of cancellations, magazine transfers, and hiatuses creating a vacuum of consistent and high-quality storytelling. As we chase down the end of 2023, it's looking to be much more of the same. Why wasn't Fab 100 able to find its footing, develop itself into a successful series, and help turn the tides of action series in Weekly Shonen Jump? There was plenty wrong with this series. The established rules of Fabricant 100 were shifted before the 10th chapter. Never a good sign. Roxy lived with her Fabricant for three years before Jenna Jameson and Ashibi Soy Boy showed up. Are we to believe that not even once before did someone else bleed out around Roxy? It was at this point that the cracks of Fabricant 100 started to show. I also think that Fab and Ashibi joining an organization so early into the manga was a terrible move. Organizations and tournament arcs are relics that should be left in the past. They don't work right now. Undead Unluck is the last modern WSJ manga that comes to mind to have successfully used those tropes, but it got dumped relatively quickly so the mangaka could favor the traveling ensemble trope. Healing abilities for main characters are lame. Too many authors rely on regeneration which makes for a more exciting but basic story. You can have dismemberment and stabbings when the main character can magically heal on their own, but it will get stale. X-Men and even Batman are going through this crisis right now, and it erases any sense of urgency within those stories. When characters can heal themselves or come back to life, do you really care when they lose an arm in a double spread? Ashibi's healing powers were the wrong direction to go in. Chapter 32 was very prophetic. The whole, it takes 38 weeks to create a child, it took weeks to develop this idea, it can all be taken away in a single moment, all of it feels like an allegory to developing a manga, having it be around for as long as you could have a child forming a woman and then have it just be pulled away from you against your will, right? Uh, I thought that was a really interesting touch by the mangaka. Despite an axed ending, it wasn't a bad ending. 100 was the star throughout this run, and I'm a bit sad that we won't see any more of her, but the fact that she stayed true to her character throughout the whole run was refreshing, and her design was awesome. I'm into sexy female characters, but I'm not so into fan service at this point in my life. Fab 100 is all class, with very little ass. I think that's a good balance for a shonen series with a female lead. At some point towards the end, the mangaka started to put 100 in the background and push Ashibi more forward, but the emotional tension between Ashibi and 100 with their stilted interactions is what made the early parts of this manga bearable. I feel that Mort's safe, the weird Sailor Moon brooch power, and the early introduction of Fabricant 1 were editorial choices. All of it distracting from what was already good, none of it contributing to the series overall, instead bogging it down. I'm not sure what would have saved Fabricant 100. It wasn't a bad series, it just wasn't that entertaining. But I do recommend this one. Fabricant 100 is one of the better cancelled Weekly Shonen Jump mangas over the last few years. In fact, with a couple changes, I could see this being a pretty solid one season action, revenge action sort of anime. Yeah, give this one a read. 5 out of 10.